But the theory is how much gold is there versus how much paper is. I use M0, the, what's called the true money supply. If you do the math, dollar and gold, how many dollars per ounce of gold came out $2,500 an ounce in 2002. And we're only at 2,200 now. If you do that same exact math, supply of gold in the treasury has not changed. That's a con and gold is con both constants. But what has changed is the M0, the base money supply. You know how, what the number is now? It's nine times higher. It's almost $20,000. So, you know, so it's a moving target. Gold doesn't change. The depreciation of the dollar does. On Friday, gold's price topped $2,426 per ounce for the first time in history. The culmination of weeks of steady price increases for an asset previously believed to be dead. Though prices have dropped by $100 due to the strengthening dollar, Experts are optimistic that there will be more price increases ahead for both gold and silver in 2024. Renowned financial commentator and publisher of the Morgan Report, David Morgan, a trusted voice in the industry, believes the true value of gold is much higher than its current price and that the precious metal should be trading near $20,000 per ounce in 2024. However, the constant manipulation of the gold and silver market has had a really dampening effect on prices. Price manipulation and suppression regardless. Gold is trading new all-time highs and primed for stronger upside moves, according to experts. In its latest note to investors, Goldman Sachs, one of the largest investment bank conglomerates, said it noticed that the traditional factors that typically cause gold price hikes are not playing out at the moment. Yet the precious metal has seen pretty decent price growth. The banking giant identified these traditional elements linked to gold price hikes as real rates growth expectations, and the dollar, adding that none of those factors explain the velocity and scale of the gold price move so far this year. In the note, the bank declared that the precious metal still has many points on its side to keep growing in the market, citing the constant demand of central banks and the increase in retail demand from mostly Asian investors. As a result of these dynamics, Goldman Sachs has revised its 2024 gold forecast from $2,300 to $2,700 per ounce. However, industry experts, such as David Morgan, hold a more optimistic view, anticipating even higher gold and silver prices by the end of the year. David shares his insights on these metals and his prediction of an impending global financial collapse in a recent interview with ITM Trading. We will feature excerpts from this interview in this video, but before we do, we kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and enabling post notifications for more content like this. Thank you for your time, and we hope you find the video informative. Well, some of it is from Chinese buying, but it's primarily algorithms and paper trading. That's the crux of it. And why is that? That's a deeper question I really can't answer. I suspect that uh, the bankers at large know what's coming. Their, their really only defense is to do what I said earlier on the broad brush view, you know, what happens during a collapse, you know, fiat fails, you go to gold, fiat fails, you go to gold. And so they, they, the central banking community has been uh, taking on gold the last couple of years at a, a very rapid rate. And now if maybe they want to mitigate uh, a further, let's say, blip in the system, still believing they're all powerful, which they're not, they might take a futures position that will take, uh, you know, gold at a $2,000 level and so you go to 2200. I mean, I just checked the charts. I was on a little TV show, I should say little, it was on a Mideast television program this morning giving a gold update for them. And, you know, 22 trading days, gold went from $2,024 to $2,224. A $200 increase in 22 trading days, even on a gold market, which is fairly large, is substantial. And this shows you nervousness in the market and who's doing it, I'm guessing. It's probably the smart money that wants to buy that cheap $2,000 gold. I want to go a step further. When I wrote one of my first pieces on the internet called Engineering the Price of Gold, people always want to know, well, what is the price of gold? When do I sell it? And they sell it when you sell it when you sell it. But the theory is how much gold is there versus how much paper is there. I use M0, the, what's called the true money supply. If you do the math, dollar and gold, it's how many dollars per ounce of gold it came out $2,500 an ounce in 2002. And we're only at 2,200 now. If you do that same exact math, the supply of gold in the treasury has not changed. That's a constant. And gold is constant. 
But what has changed is the M0, the base money supply. You know how, what the number is now? It's nine times higher. It's almost $20,000. So, you know, so it's a moving target. Gold doesn't change. The depreciation of the dollar does. And it's been a nine-fold change since roughly 20, 23 year, 22 years ago. You don't want to focus too much on the paper price. And we all do. Even I do at times. But you want to look at value. What does gold buy in terms of another commodity? What does it buy in terms of a house? What does it buy in terms of men's or women's clothing? You want to see if it's undervalued, not based on price, but based on what it does in the sector on a long-term basis. During the interview, David recalls the old adage about an ounce of gold being equal to the price of a decent men's suit with shoes, a hat, a belt, and other stuff. David reckons that as long as gold's price is not above that, the commodity can still be perceived as completely undervalued. David also cautions investors to look beyond price increases and hold on very tightly to their gold and silver, especially during these moments of increasing geopolitical instability. According to the popular silver bull, the world is heading for a financial collapse that will destroy billions of dollars in wealth. David describes what's coming as a complete decimation of the financial system and warns that it's much closer than everyone expects. Let's get back to the interview. So first of all, when you hear those words, a complete, you know, desolation of the financial system, you've got to put it in the proper context. And so let's say there's a complete decimation of the current system. I don't think it's going to go that far, but let's just go that far. What happens? Well, what happens is that all the wealth stays in place. So all the schools, all the churches, all the department stores, all the automobile factories, all the automobile salespeople, used cars and new cars, everything that exists in the physical economy it stays in place. So nothing goes away. So it's not like the physical economy disappears, which is a connection a lot of people get when you give the idea of a financial collapse. So you have a financial collapse and the physical economy is exactly the same as it was the day before. So what takes place? Well, basically what takes place in a very broad brush idea is the ownership changes. Basically, anyone that is over leveraged and cannot meet their payments, meet their bills, make their car payment, their house payment, their lease payment on their auto dealership, their, um, their warehouse or whatever it is, has to mark to market what they have and put it at the market, which would be hugely deflationary in most instances. And the ownership changes and then things can restart. Now, that's a very broad brush view, but I don't want people to panic that everything stops. It doesn't. What really takes place in almost all instances, except in very uh, long ago instances where it was a, a certain nation state, is you basically do a currency reset or a monetary reset. And again, the broad brush stroke on that is you go from a fiat failure to a gold standard. And then you morph back to a fiat system and you, you, that fails again, and you go back to a gold standard. Again, a very broad brush view, but pretty much in a nutshell, how the systems go back and forth. So where we are right now is a precarious place because not only, it's not a one nation state, it's not the Weimar Republic, it's not Argentina, it's not Turkey, it's not you know, Argentina, it is global. Now, the BRICs have mitigated the problem somewhat by trading with each other's currencies and really circumventing the dollar, but all those dollar debts to all these third world countries and other nation states, first world countries, still exist and must be paid back in dollars. So I see it as what the, the Davos folks and others talk about, you know, the great reset. What they're really talking about is resetting the financial system or the monetary system to a new paradigm where they can actually wipe out or mitigate a lot of this debt that's owed between themselves and between investors and investment banks and on and on it goes and start over. So again, the physical economy really wouldn't change that much other than who owns it. Well, that's really the biggest question of all because who owns it? If you look at what David Rogers Webb and I have uh, talked yeah. about, and he's done many interviews, I, I really enjoyed that interview and he seemed to like it as well. He gave me a nice compliment, but forget me, the, the principles are more important. 
But that's part one. And part two is what is the end of it? And that's given us to buy the WF. You'll own nothing and be happy. So if you look at those two perspectives, I'm not saying I agree that it's true, but we're certainly getting very strong, clear indicators that the elite want it all and we don't get anything. So the ownership change is we don't have anything left. They own it all. Physical economy is basically the same, and there's a one new ownership, which is very, really disheartening. Of course, I've spent my whole life trying to mitigate this type of a situation, as you well know. According to David Rogers Webb, the author of The Great Taking, the global elites have spent decades planning the moment when they finally take charge of every wealth in the system, leaving nothing at all for the rest of us. However, Morgan believes people are getting more informed about these sinister plans and will rise up and resist these efforts. But we can only resist when we are not completely dependent on their systems. This is why experts like David advocate that we keep stacking, ignore price movements, and hold on for as long as possible until the elites and central banks fully reveal their endgame. Please share your thoughts on David Morgan's interview in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.